بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دس از انجینئر فضل کریم اسسٹنٹ پروفیسر ڈپارٹمنٹ آف سول انجینئرنگ سرحد یونیورسٹی رنگ روڈ پشاور آئی ایم یور ٹیچر فار دا سبجیکٹ آف سول انجینئرنگ مٹیریلس کورس کوڈ آف دا سبجیکٹ از سی ای ون زیرو ٹو اینڈ دس سبجیکٹ ول بی ٹاٹ ٹو دا اسٹوڈنٹ آف سیکنڈ سیمسٹر بیچ فال ٹو Here on the screen, you can say that uh, I have mentioned my two email addresses. One is engr underscore fuzzly at rate of yahoo.com and the other is kareem.sevel at rate of su.edu.pk. It is for the purpose that if you feel any difficulty in studying the current lecture or if you feel some problems uh, so that you may contact me through these email Uh, addresses or you can uh, access me through the whatsapp group uh, but before starting lecture uh, i would like to tell you that try to be at home and don't waste your precious time and i assure you that if you put your heart and soul and your uh, effort to study this lecture you will not be able to feel any difficulty uh, in studying this lecture but still if there is any problem Uh, just contact me I am available uh, from 8 a.m. in the morning till 11.30 p.m. at night here I have recommended some books for you guys if you want to study the current subject yourself one is principles of material sciences and engineering and the other is fundamentals of building construction the subject which we are going to target in uh, you know current semester uh, is civil engineering materials and you will be taught uh, various types of materials which are to be used uh, in construction industry uh, there are various types of material and practice these days and uh, for example these materials are uh, stones bricks Uh, tiles and terracotta lime cement aggregates mortars concrete timber paints and varnishes metals plastics glass tar bitumen and asphalt with some special miscellaneous topics like bakelite nylon polythene polypropylene glass and mica etc etc so all these you know topics uh, are included uh, and will be required to be taught to you guys in current semester but for today's lecture our target our topic which we want to study is a brick so first of all uh, here you can see uh, a lot of bricks you know on the screen and in today's lecture i'll try to make you understand uh, about bricks uh, Uh, their classes are uh, the usage their properties uh, and their preparation uh, first of all here you can see I want to tell you that what is brick here on the screen you can see that bricks are basically you know uh, masonry units usually uh, available in the form of blocks made up of tempered clay molded to suitable shape and size dried in the Sun and burned actually first of all uh, clay you know or earth or uh, soil material is basically collected and then it is you know needed or tamped in order to avoid any agglomeration or lumps uh, you know or clusters uh, uh, in order to get uniform soil uh, then an optimum amount of water is added to the you, you know to the soil just to get a paste and the paste is then molded uh, and after that uh, the bricks are basically dried in the sun Uh, if the bricks are dried in the sun it is called sun dried bricks but after you know uh, uh, that sun dried bricks are usually taken to the kiln for burning and then when the bricks are burnt in the kiln then the bricks are called burnt bricks bricks are extensively used in construction because of you know local and cheap availability these materials are locally available you don't need to import or you know bring from far away you can get it in the local market available at cheap cost 
the second property is you know strength what is strength strength is basically resistance uh, offered by a material or maybe brick to external force before uh, breaking uh, durability uh, durability is basically resistance offered by a material uh, to environment or resistance offered by a material to environmental attacks or it is basically resistance offered by brick or any kind of civil engineering material to alternate cycles of freezing time heating cooling and uh, wetting drying so the bricks are have high durability I mean it is capable uh, you know to offer much resistance to alternate cycle of freezing time cooling and wetting uh, drying uh, it offers also you know good insulating property against heat and sound or we can say that bricks are heat proof and sound proofs bricks are broadly classified into two categories one is i have told you that if the bricks are dried in the sun then these are called sun dried or kacha bricks uh, but after sun drying if the bricks are taken to the kiln uh, for burning then the bricks will be called as burnt or pakka bricks uh, types of burnt or pakka bricks first class brick second class bricks third class and or burnt bricks here are some characteristics of first class bricks uh, here on the screen you can see some uh, characteristics of the first class bricks first class bricks are good quality as compared to other classes good bricks are manufactured from good quality plastic earth which is free from saline deposit first class bricks are molded by table molding and burnt in large kilns they have a standard size they are uniform in color they are well burnt hard ringing sound is emitted when two bricks are stuck together they have straight edges and even surfaces they are free from cracks chip flaws and nodules of lime they have less water absorption i mean when that is submerged in water for 24 hours so uh, bricks shouldn't absorb more than 15 percent of uh, water uh, now here some common usage of first class bricks have been mentioned and two picks have also been shown first class bricks are used for the permanent structure uh, external walls flooring reinforced brickwork uh, arches etc etc they are costly than other type of bricks mentioned in this lecture now here some characteristics of the second class bricks the second class bricks is ground molded and these bricks are burnt in kiln second class bricks also confirm to the standard size but they are slightly irregular in shape and color they are also fully burnt and are ringing sound and a ringing sound is emitted when two bricks are stuck together it may have hair cracks and their edges may not be as sharp and uniform as compared to the first class bricks now here some uses with two relevant picks have been displayed for exterior work when plastering is done compound walls partitioning walls it can also be used for interior walls but not for flooring they have more tin size strength and water absorption now characteristics of third class bricks third class bricks are not fully burnt due to which they are of reddish yellow color they are not hard and they have rough surfaces with irregular and distorted edges they have less strength and high water absorption and some common uses of these have been mentioned these bricks are used for unimportant and temporary structures 
and at the places where rainfall is not heavy i mean small brick foundation paving etc etc overburned bricks uh, as it has been shown that being near the fire in kiln these bricks get fused and lost their shape some common use have been mentioned used for construction of inferior structure used for foundation of structure and used as aggregate for concrete uh, these type of bridges can, uh, when grinded can be used as a sub base or base course materials now here composition of the brick earth has been shown a good brick earth should preferably conform to the following composition clay content 20 to 30 percent by weight cell 20 to 35 percent by weight sand 35 to 50 percent by weight but it is very important to note that the total content of the clay and cell should not be less than 50 percent by weight no preparation of the bricks uh, here about seven important steps are involved in the uh, preparation of bricks and these steps with corresponding pack you know uh, have been shown uh, and one all of these will be explained one by one the first one is you know digging uh, even uh, you can get sufficient information uh, of the digging from the given pick but still I would like to uh, explain it very briefly uh, if the area from the from where soil is to be taken is grassy or has other vegetation then the top layer about 20 cm deep is excavated and thrown away as it contains roots of vegetation and other organic matters the excavated lumps clusters or agglomeration of soil are broken it is ensured that the soil is free from gravel coarse sand lime and conquered particles vegetable matter etc etc number two is weathering the excavated soil after the clothes have been broken is mixed with little water and is left in heap to weather for a period varying from a few weeks to as long as it can be left this improves its plasticity and strength to keep the soil wet to keep the soil wet water may be spread on the heap from time to time and the heap turned over now the next is the next is blending the earth is then thoroughly broken and mixed with sandy soil if needed the whole mass is thoroughly mixed and a reasonable amount of water is added if needed. The important phase is tempering. The blended soil is needed under the feet of men or cattle after desired quantities of water have been added to it. The whole mass becomes homogeneous and plastic. It is then left covered with mats and allowed to dry gradually in layers about 30 cm thick for not less than 36 hours till it is just soft enough for molding. Pug mill as described below is used for tempering earth needed for the manufacturing of bricks either on large scale or for use on superior works like arches and moldings now uh, here in this slide you can see uh, a pug mill uh, with descriptions you know all the dimensions uh, have been displayed and it is basically used for you know uh, mixing water and soil just to make a paste so I would like to give a brief uh, description of this you know 
pug mill. Uh, it is basically a conical iron tube of the shape uh, which has been shown uh, in given figure. Uh, in the center of the tube, there is a vertical iron shaft. Here you can see that this is vertical iron shaft. Uh, to this shaft, are, you know, here you can see this vertical shaft is further connected to these horizontal, uh, you know, shaft containing uh, knives or, you know, blades. The mill is sunk 60 cm deep in earth. Here you can see that from this level to this level, this portion is basically, you know, deep in soil, which is about a 60 cm. And fixed on a pair of square timber 20 cm by 20 cm. The central vertical iron shaft is rotated by bullocks yoked at the end of a horizontal arm the other end of which is fixed to the top of the shaft the mill could however by work by using steam diesel or electric power blender brick are along with the required quantity of water is fed in the mill from top here you can see that the mixed uh, soil with optimum amount of water is basically fed from here and then uh, basically when the electric motor is turned on uh, then the vertical shaft rotate and it is linked with the horizontal shaft the horizontal shaft also you know rotates and thus is continuously mix uh, you know soil and water and produced a paste and this then The, this the required paste which is basically uh, sent for uh, molding now the remaining part of uh, this lecture which is uh, contains basically uh, you know um, molding drying and burning will be taught to you guys in the next lecture so thank you very much